the main character is a Korean Canadian girl who's six years old and inspired by my mother-in-law who immigrated to Canada 40 years ago with uh, two children and made a life for herself. So after school. After 11 interviews, mother finally got a job in a nursing home where her choppy English was less of an impediment. Now that we had two incomes, we were able to move from our subsidized apartment to a townhouse complex in Scarborough, one of several Korean families drawn by the government's low mortgage interest program. Brother was under strict orders from my parents to behave properly at our new school. Brother would stand outside the entrance to my grade one classroom, careful not to block the door and get a scolding from my teacher. When I walked into the hallway, coat dutifully buttoned and shoelaces tied, brother would stick out his arm and formally take my hand. Every day our back silhouetted the hallway as I hopped to keep up with his jerky strides until we pushed through the front doors, past the flagpole, where we would turn left at the T-junction of sidewalks in front of the school. Brother would hold my hand until we reached the first street, almost out of view of the school, as if the window brick wall were a big unblinking eye. Then he would let go of my hand, push it away, like he did when mother tried to make him eat meum tong. Only then did he seem like my real brother, the boy I would see playing at recess, mouth open and wet, one pant knee muddy, and an elbow freshly scratched. It would take 10 minutes for us to walk from the school back to our house. The curtains on our front window were always closed when we arrived. We weren't allowed to open them or answer the door or phone until mother returned. Brother would open the door with a key tied to a string around his neck. He would bang through the door first, tossing his shoes into the closet with thoughts of mother yelling in English, take off shoes, take off shoes. Well, I tucked my Oxford carefully inside. We would slide our stocking feet into the slippers left out in the hall for me, red for me and tan brown for brother. Often, brother ran directly to the fridge, grabbed a patty of pinda duck and shoved it into his mouth while his other hand grabbed a second patty. Mother always left us food on the third shelf of the fridge in tightly sealed red and green plastic containers. Sometimes we ate leftovers from the previous night's dinner or nibbled on orange sections that we would spear with tiny metal forks. On special occasions, we would find pink and green balls of duck that we would bite in half to lick the red bean paste inside. Other times, brother would run directly from the hall into the living room, take three large steps from the doorway to the couch. He would land heavily on the cushions, banging the couch into the unpainted wall. When he righted him, he would bark out for me to bring him a snack flicking his hands like my father did when requesting barley tea. Once we both had our snacks, we would settle down, chewing slack jaw while we watched the television screen, forgetting each other's presence. First, we would watch the command show, then the Flintstones, and depending on who was most forceful, either the Brady Bunch or the Friendly Giant. My brother thought the Friendly Giant was a baby show, and he would badger me as we watch standing up to imitate Rusty's puppet movement with spastic jerks. We sat there cushioned on the couch until mother walked up the front steps, either at a quarter to five or five o'clock, depending on which bus she caught from the old age home. Today, mother was on the later bus. She stayed behind to ask one of the nurses about the inoculation notice sent by our school. Primary grade children were gonna be vaccinated at home the public health nurse was scheduled to visit after school at four o'clock. Father to the building site until seven and mother wasn't home until five. 